Hi everybody, welcome to 40k Amateur Hour, how to paint a cork base for flyers. Today we're going to show you how to make a cork base for any flyer. I'm going to demonstrate on the Heldrake, Chaos Heldrake, and so let's get started. Let's start. So the material we're going to need is obviously the flyer base and the little stand that it goes on. And then also what you're going to need is some cork. Now you get to choose what kind of cork. Here I have this rather large sheet of cork and I got it at a local hobby store and I got it for very cheap. But you can use the small as, as, as well. It's up to you and your taste. So what I'm doing is I'm just breaking off the cork to uh, the shapes that I particularly like. Now what I'm going for with this effect is like a cliff or a, a mountain kind of overhang. So I've been breaking off the, the, the pieces. You really don't want any straight edges. Go ahead and just break it off with your hands. It should be relatively easy. And uh, place it in any kind of form or shape shape that you think that looks uh, pretty awesome or cool. Awesome. Next you're going to take yourself a hot glue gun, and I, and I prefer a hot glue gun over super glue or plastic cement. It seems to cement more and uh, bind more to the cork and to the plastic. And you're just going to uh, go ahead and heat that up. Be careful, it's hot. And uh, you go ahead and put that on the base of your flyer, and then you're going to put your first layer of cork down on top of it and make sure that it's uh, nice and secure and dry. And next you're going to take another piece of cork and you're going, to, you're going to break it off in the same manner as you did the first. Only this one's going to be a little bit smaller and you're going to try to make it uh, kind of the same shape and not quite because nothing in nature is ever the same shape. But go ahead and break it off. Save the little pieces. You're going to use those for later. Just don't throw those out. Anything you break away is kind of safe. And you're going to do the same thing. Make sure it kind of dry fits on first. When you're happy the way it looks, go ahead and take your uh, hot glue gun. Go ahead and put it on top of the, the first layer of your cork and then press your second layer on top. Right, and as I was putting the second layer, I decided to add a third layer, so I just went ahead and, and used a smaller piece on top of that. And then all the little tiny little pieces that I had, I, I, I put on top for, for a little bit of effect. Remember that it, this is completely up to you. There's no rhyme or reason that what you have to do to it. It's whatever looks good. And nothing in nature is symmetrical or the same. So kind of tear it at it and make it look nice and neat and, and put it right on top of there. On top. Alright, so what I have here is the completed glued model of the base. I've got four or five different layers of cork on here, each one a different, a little bit smaller, so it kind of builds up in somewhat of a pyramid or kind of a platform. And, uh, and here's a little side view of it to make sure it looks uh, nice and neat like a cliff. Right, what we have here is uh, the Minotaur paint airbrush line, muddy brown. We're going to go ahead and put that in our airbrush. And then we're going to cover the whole entire base. We're going to base coat the actual flyer base with this, the cork and the plastic underneath. Now, if you notice, I've got a little bit of cork overhanging the edge of this. Now, if, you, if you're a stickler for wanting the base actually to be completely within gameplay you can just tear off that uh, those edges those overhangs and make it nice and neat around the base but I decided after looking at it that I kind of wanted a little bit bigger bigger cliff than the actual the round plastic base that GW gives you so I left it on there but it's completely up to you go ahead and put this in your airbrush like I'm doing and just cover the whole entire thing including the plastic so it's all one nice and uh, even coat in color of muddy brown Up, we're going to use Minotaur's Cracked Leather. It's a lighter brown than the, than the last one you used. And you're going to put that in your airbrush, and what you're going to do is you're going to spray this all over your base at roughly a 45 degree angle, just, just a little bit under half. And what you're doing is you want to cover the whole entire top of it and just a little bit of the sides. And what this is going to do is this is going to give the effect of sunlight or an object light shining down on top of it. Don't do it underneath because you want to be able to say like the shadows and, and uh, where the sun doesn't actually get inside the cliff, those are darker. So just on the right on top like I'm doing right here, and uh, just about 45 degrees and up like I said before. For. for our final choice of paint, we're going to use the Minotaur line Earth, and again, this is a lighter brown than even the previous that, so we've gone dark, kind of medium, and light, and I'm going to take a, an old brush that you don't like, a, a bigger brush for this works really well. You can use a small brush, but a, a bigger one works really well for a larger base. One that you don't care about, one that's kind of smashed down like I have here, and what you're going to do is you're going to take your paint, and you're going to put it in your, your palette or whatever, and you're going to dry brush over the entire model. So taking specifics with cork, what I found is on the side, it really makes the edges pop, and so what I'm doing here is just kind of hitting the top and hitting the, the edges. It gets inside the cracks. You don't want to do it completely. You don't want to mess it up so that it just covers the whole entire thing as a light cover. But you're just hitting the edge, doing that nice little highlighting and a little edge lining right there. And it's really going to make your cliff give that three-dimensional pop look with your three colors.
All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the clear place plastic stem that the flyer actually sits on and we're going to take some paper clips and we're going to straighten those out and glue on the inside of the or the middle of your clear plastic stand. And this is so that we can pin the actual stand and the, the top heavy flyer model to the cork base. You just don't want to glue that bottom otherwise it's really not going to hold in any kind of transport in your car or going to a tournament or whatever or your local game shop. So go ahead and glue it on there and then glue the bottom as you see fit and go ahead and pin it inside the Okay, and so finally what I've done here is I'm going to take, I'm going to add my effects. And so I decided on a snow effect for this one instead of some grass. And what I do is I take some normal white modeling glue, or, or I'm sorry, normal white glue, and I actually add water to it to thin it down. So it's just not the, the standard craft glue that you have, but I thinned it down a lot. And I take an old brush that I don't want and I just dip it in the glue. And I'm going to put it inside the crevices where I'm thinking the sun is going to shine and on top of the cliff, but it's not going to quite melt all the snow off. So in the little deep ridges right here. And I'm just going to dab the glue into my, or dab the, the brush into my glue and put it in those little crevices. And then I'm going to take the snow or the flocking you can get. You can get them in you know, whatever kind you want. Go ahead and put it on there. And as you can see that it starts to really build up and, and give it that nice effect, not just a cliff, but you can add grass, you can add uh, sand, you can do whatever you'd like to do to this. So I just kept working around the base of the model and turning it, you know, each time I went around in 360 and kind of step back and look at it. And I would look at it as if the sun was shining on it, like I said before, and just the, where the snow would, would not melt in nature. And just keep adding whatever you'd like. Like. Okay guys, well here's the finished base. And what I've done is I've added a Chaos Heldrake from my earlier videos, How to Paint a Chaos Heldrake. And you can see that uh, I've added a Japanese grave marker. And this was just some random little bit that I found in my bit box. I and mean, you can add anything else. You can add, you know, space marines that are flying underneath it or even Necron shooting up at it. There's some cool effects that you can buy out there with that. So thanks for uh, watching our, our video. And like, subscribe, comment, and happy wargaming.